Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another unusual phenomenon on the planet, the picture from which you see right here, this was taken in Hawaii a few years ago, that the scientists might have actually finally kind of explained, at least to some extent. And in this case, this is an electrical phenomenon kind of related to the lightning, something that's familiar to most of us, but at the same time represents a kind of an upside down lightning that goes into space instead of hitting planet Earth. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a slightly deeper look at some of these electrical phenomena on the planet, and specifically figuring out what we know and don't know about them. And actually that second part, not knowing, is a lot bigger than knowing. We sort of understand how lightning works, the one that you see right here, although obviously even here there are quite a lot of mysteries. But the thing is, back in 1989, Completely by accident, some of the cameras, for the first time ever, caught some other phenomena that nobody knew existed until then. And since then, in the last three decades, quite a few of them have been discovered, confirmed, and to some extent, maybe explained, but not very thoroughly, helping the scientists realize that lightning by itself is just a tip of an iceberg. In reality, when it comes to various lightning phenomena, there are quite a lot of them happening in various layers of the atmosphere, and some of them are actually way more powerful than anything we experience here on the planet, on the surface of the planet. For example, quite a lot of various photographs have captured this. These are usually known as sprites. And sprites have been seen in a lot of different videos from various organizations, including NASA's cameras. As a matter of fact, you can often see these sprites in a lot of different observations from the International Space Station. Then, a bit more recently, the scientists in Canada identified a much more recent phenomenon that's now referred to as STEVE, Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement. These phenomena are also quite different from a typical lightning and generally seem to appear around the same time when the solar activity increases, which often leads to a lot of aurora as well. Although obviously even today there are still a lot of mysteries about its origins and the actual way that it works. It's a very recent phenomenon and a lot of scientists are still struggling to understand it. Then we have these phenomena that often start in the atmosphere and head towards space. Here's one such example. Today they are sort of referred to as elves. And these phenomena are also still not entirely well understood, but they also might be kind of related to how these jets form as well. But in this video, I really wanted to focus on the most powerful one, the one that scientists usually refer to as the gigantic jets. This obviously being one example. And so unlike Steve, unlike elves and sprites, the gigantic jets, as the name implies, will often be super big. They'll often start somewhere in the lower atmosphere and extend really high up, sometimes reaching the ionosphere, and in this case, reaching the altitude of about 90 kilometers. This is the event that was observed in 2018 in Oklahoma. And it's actually today referred to as the Oklahoma event. And these jets have been studied for the past two decades, but there is unfortunately no direct way for us to measure them or to somehow try to detect just these particular phenomena. As of today, most of the detections were either accidental or were based on the observations of an entirely different electrical phenomena. For example, in this case, this was a photograph by a citizen scientist by the name of Chris Holmes, who took these photographs on May 14th of 2018. But it's not the first time these jets have been captured, and even captured in Oklahoma, and you can find more of them in the link in the description directly from NASA. This right here is what's known as the astronomy picture of the day, and this is from back in 2007. Although technically this is a video, and in this case it kind of shows us the formation and the propagation of this jet. All of this happens super super fast. As a matter of fact, it's barely even visible. And this is at like half and one fourth of the speed. So these particular events happen really quickly, but they're also extremely, extremely powerful. And here in Oklahoma, it seems to happen quite a lot. Even during this night, it happened twice. But I guess what's unique about these phenomena compared to some of the other electrical phenomena is that they generally do not really depend on the lightning that you see right here. So even though some of the phenomena, such as elves, might form during a typical thunderstorm, these gigantic jets do not. They seem to be independent of any lightning on the surface. And all this comes from this study you can find in the description that for the first time ever was able to very thoroughly investigate, analyze, and explain some of these events, including sort of helping us understand how they form, how they work, and how they differ from a typical lightning. 
And so first of all, the analysis here determined that this was the most powerful event ever studied. This 2018 event carried approximately 100 times as much electrical charge as a typical thunderstorm lightning strike. So basically this was like 100 of these at the same time. In more scientific terms, it carried roughly around 300 coulomb of electrical charge from the lower atmosphere of the planet all the way into the ionosphere at the rough altitude of about 90 kilometers or 50 miles. Whereas the most powerful lightning strike will usually carry about 5 coulomb and it's going to be between the cloud and the ground. With the analysis also determining that there are actually two different parts here. There's a relatively cold part and a relatively hot part. The cold part is about 200 degrees Celsius and is made out of streamers of plasma. 200 degrees Celsius is still pretty hot, but not as hot as some of the other stuff. But it also contains what scientists refer to as liters, which contain plasma that's about 4400 degrees Celsius, or basically 20 times as hot, with the hotter part being closer to the surface and the colder part being closer to space. And in this case, the scientists were even able to create a kind of a three-dimensional representation of all of this, including the analysis using relatively high-quality data that came from the accidental observations that were detected from various radio and radar systems located in the region. For example, using some of the radar data, they were able to establish that an extremely hot part of the leader portion was located above the clouds. That's where the temperatures reached about 4000 degrees. And then using radio observations in very high frequencies, they were able to observe the emissions from the streamers that were much cooler and seemed to form along various tips of the developing lightning. In other words, they were forming along these lines right here and also right here. And although these tips represented some of the weaker parts of this lightning, the strongest electric current was actually right behind it inside of these leaders that I previously mentioned. And one of the reasons the scientists were able to produce all of this super accurate data is because they got really lucky. One of the instruments that was located nearby is NASA's Lightning Mapping Array, a lightning instrument that's able to produce very accurate observations of typical lightning strikes. And at the same time, it was also located near NOAA's Next Generation Weather Radar, an extremely powerful weather instrument that's able to detect all of this with quite a lot of detail. In other words, unlike previous relatively simple observations, here the scientists got super lucky. Especially because gigantic jets are believed to be some of the rarest electrical phenomena on the planet. Only about a thousand to maybe fifty thousand of these happen per year, compared to millions and millions of typical lightning strikes, so these are not very common. And generally they also happen around tropical storms. And this was not one of them. Yet surprisingly, this was the most powerful detected so far, at least twice as powerful as anything we've seen before. And in this case, the scientists believe that all of this starts somewhere on the top of the clouds. Specifically, these cold streamers will usually start their propagation, but instead of heading downwards, they head upwards toward the ionosphere. And they then make the connection between the lower clouds and the lower parts of the ionosphere approximately 50 miles in the altitude or about 90 kilometers. Discharging all of their energy all at once, but in this case, instead of going into the ground, all of this goes into the ionosphere. The electrically charged layer located above our planet that starts at approximately 50 kilometers and goes all the way up to about 900 kilometers. With the strange phenomenon then transferring all of its negative charge all at once in less than one second. Much quicker than a typical lightning. Although in this case the radio emissions were mostly detected at an altitude of 22 to 45 kilometers, whereas the optical emissions or visual light was only visible slightly lower, 15 to 20 kilometers. Once again suggesting that this particular phenomenon seems to be made out of two separate parts, with the bluish color in this case very likely being formed by the ionization of nitrogen that's quite prominent in these layers. The question is why does this happen? Why upside down lightning? And the answer might actually be pretty obvious. Something prevents the charge from going downwards. In other words, the only reason these gigantic jets seem to occur is because something seems to block the charge from following its normal route downwards from creating typical lightning. And so when it sort of accumulates to extreme amounts, in this case anywhere from 20 to 100 times the normal amount of charge, instead of creating your typical lightning, it forms this. The upwards lightning, I guess. And the radar slash radio observations confirm this. 
Prior to the detection of this gigantic jet, extremely low activity of lightning, normal lightning, was reported in this particular area. So something was suppressing it for some reason. The actual reason is unknown, but it clearly results in a buildup of huge amounts of charge that then only has one way to go – upwards instead of downwards. But obviously this doesn't provide all of the answers just yet. Which is why this is still technically part of the so-called mysterious TLEs or transient luminous events, also known as upper atmospheric lightning, events that we've only learned about in 1989 and the events that the scientists are still trying to understand. There seem to be quite a lot of them and many of them seem to be produced for completely different reasons. But this one here seems to be of particular interest to NASA because it's believed it can actually affect not just aircraft, but also potentially different satellites. And today it's even believed that most of the electrical issues experienced by airplanes above a typical thunderstorm have actually been caused by one of these phenomena. Not normal lightning, but these upper atmospheric lightnings. And so this is definitely of a lot of interest to both NASA and also organizations responsible for the safety of airplanes. Although as some of the NASA's recent images from Jupiter showed us, this phenomenon definitely exists outside of planet Earth as well. It seems to be very common on Jupiter and seems to produce even more powerful jets. Electric jets that are hundreds and even thousands of times more powerful than the ones on planet Earth. But we'll actually be talking more about this in some of the future videos because NASA have already made so many new discoveries about this phenomenon on Jupiter as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the links in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.